Hello everyone and welcome to Philippe and Newcast's Mars Odyssey, a four-part series recapping the epic journey of Philippe Kerman and Newcast Kerman to Mars and back. Over two years ago, I started a career mode series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2 with the Realism Overall set of mods and Real Solar System, beginning with the spin-stabilized sounding rockets of the 1950s. Over the course of that series and the Beyond History series which continued with the same save, I covered 30 years of simulated history in about 100 episodes to get to the point where I could launch two Kerbals to Mars. Because it was in career mode though, this Mars mission occurred alongside missions to Venus, the Moon, and the outer planets, and might have been a bit hard to follow and enjoy. So I've decided to edit the mission together and cut out some of the more tedious bits to present the essence of the Mars Odyssey. Hopefully I haven't edited so much out that it is difficult to follow. This episode focuses on the launches to Mars, and there will be a total of 10 launches. The main mission is the Ares Pod A, and that contains the two Kerbals, but we're not going to launch that first. The first thing we launch is Marsport 1, which is a space station for Mars. We will have a backup for Marsport 1, the second Marsport 1. There are also going to be two Ares Pod Gs. Those are the landers to land on the surface of Mars. And then there are two light landers. Those are to land on Phobos and Deimos. There are two UDMH depots, which are simply additional fuel. And finally, there is one Mars base which is optional for this particular mission, and we'll see how that goes. So, with the first launch, the launch of a Marsport 1, on basically an upgraded Saturn V rocket, uh, we will begin. From here on, we'll go with the original audio from the episodes. The station module looks a lot like the station modules we've launched before. So you noted that we have some duplicates of each mission and the basic idea is that at least one of each type has to work before we launch the Ares Pod A. So at least one Marsport 1, one Light Lander, one UDMH Depot, and one Ares Pod G. And then that'll be good enough to launch the Ares Pod A with the crew. That doesn't mean the Ares Pod A is, you know, gotta be safe in that case. But the Ares Pod A mission contains the, all the supplies. None of these others contains the life support supplies. All of the other missions just increase the capabilities of the crewed mission that we're going to send over to Mars. None of the other missions is required to have them survive and come back. Given that, that means that they can't really survive on the surface for very long. So. Since Ares Pod A is the one carrying all the supplies, we're not carrying those, those supplies down to the surface yet. Ares Pod G is the one that's supposed to land on the surface. And they'll have to rendezvous with that, or ill rendezvous with them, in order to have them reach the surface. So they'll transfer to that, and then use that to go down, and then come back up again. Okay, the J2s. And we have a good ignition. Everything seems alright as far as our velocities. So you can see the configuration of this. Uh, a small sort of thing, big solar panels because we're relying on the Sun in orbit of Mars, which is half the strength as it is around the Earth. We've got our supplies here, food, water, and oxygen. Uh, it won't tell us how much that is because we don't have any Kerbals on board, but it's, uh, it's a decent amount at least. And we've got Arizian 204 and uh, Gemini Lander engines on the outboard here to control this when it uh, captures around Mars. Importantly, we don't carry much ablator. Uh, in fact, I don't think we need any ablator in order to capture around Mars with this. But I carried a little bit just in case. The, the crewed mission actually does not carry any ablator at all. Which is uh, an interesting choice on my part daring choice, if you will. We'll see how it works out for us. It's not the case that we're using Saturn V's all the way. Um, for Mars ports, we are. But for the light landers, which are just for Phobos and Deimos, which carry two crew, by the way, um, we're using Fiji 2R1s, so two F1s and then one RD270, and then uh, J2. And then uh, Ares Pod A does use a Saturn V. 
UDM H Depot uses three F1s, an RD270 and an uh, J2. We are only aiming to send two crew to Mars this time. Okay, good times. That is done. And now I have to plot for Mars. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. We're probably a little bit off here and we'll need a correction. What did we end up with? Well, we didn't end up with a Mars encounter at all. Well, fortunately, it's a reasonably large correction of 200 meters per second. And I say fortunately because it was a small correction, I'd be resorting to using the RCS thrusters and uh, wouldn't be able to use the main engine. We still have a single ignition remaining on this J2 and we might as well use it. So let's time warp a little bit. It's mostly a radial burn because, of course, the timing was off, and when the timing is off, that means you've got a radial burn. So it'll just be a minor correction at Mars, and we'll decide there exactly wh what altitude we want to enter in. Uh, let me add that alarm. 293 days, though. It's a long time. Okay, we actually rolled this out in a day, but we had to wait for the launch pad reconditioning, so we're losing time here and that's uh, gonna cause problems for the subsequent missions but I'll admit that this doesn't look particularly good yeah it's 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 an awkward looking sort of thing and it's launching on the Fiji 2R1 to give it enough Delta V to reach Mars so let's run that launch script Fiji 2R1 No Kerbals on board, of course, and this hinges on the Gemini capsule, this Gemini capsule, being able to work without Kerbals on board. I've had trouble with that before, uh, even with the avionics being alright, but hopefully it's okay this time. It's got a lot of thrust weight ratio at the start, 1.8. So everything, if everything works out, this would be the craft that they would take to land on Mars. There we go. Currently this version is configured to bring this back down, but I don't think stage recovery accepts that this would survive. I think it uh, thinks that it'll blow up, so... And probably that's true. We're getting a little bit too far out to allow for survival of this. Okay, separation of the engine part, and then the stage, and then ignition of the J2. Okay, well it's made orbit, but this is not a particularly good situation to transfer over to Mars. Not if we want to keep all the fuel in the pod for the landing and ascent, which, you know, it needs about 4,500 for that, and that's what we see here. So, this was a misjudged launch based on numbers from Mechjeb in the VAB that I thought were nice, but apparently not nice enough. So, I'm wondering what to do about this. It's possible we could just send something up to refuel this. Uh, let's pop off the cap. Couple node. How quickly could we send something to get some fuel up here is sort of the question. It'd be a shame to lose this, and we don't need that much. We need maybe a th another thousand meters per second would do the trick. Let's not waste time. We'll, we'll need some time to build the mission to rendezvous with this. And we'll need to just roll out the next thing. Otherwise, we're going to lose time here. So we'll roll out a light lander, and let me get constructing on a refueler for this. Let's see. It's tough to say exactly how much fuel we need, but it'd be nice to give this another, let's just say, exactly what it has right now. 54,000 hydrogen and 18,000 liquid oxygen. All right, here we are with the light lander meant for Phobos and Deimos, again with the Fiji 2R1, but the light lander is, as it says, light. So hopefully this one will work out and have enough delta V in orbit in order to transfer to Mars. So without further ado, run Fiji 2R1. There we 
go. Okay, and that's not exactly what I wanted to happen right there, but I think we'll be alright. Okay. Good. And ignition. Alright. Well, that was more steps than I intended, but we're alright. The J2 is ignited, and we continue to orbit. Okay, we have a shutdown. And in orbit, we have 3,769 meters per second, which hopefully will be enough to transfer this over to Mars. Let's find out. Alright, the plot that we have uh, will take 3,612 meters per second, which it, we have enough for. It's, of course, possible to just have the Kerbal land themselves on Phobos and Deimos via EVA, but... We'll get to that if we need to. This will certainly be in orbit around those moons either way. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. And shutdown. Okay, says 4.1 remaining. What's our actual situation here? Uh, well, we have an encounter at least. That's always good. But we're definitely going to need to replot that. Alright, so let me do that. Okay, after a somewhat arduous RCS burn, we've got our approach correct, but of course I have to decouple now, and that's going to throw everything off. Uh, why don't I... Well, that tank is full. These tanks are not. So let me just do a one-to-one -one topping off there. Okay, separation. RCS forward. Check that we still have a heat shield. Alright. Check what our approach is looking like right now. Well, we can fix that once we get there. So if the Kerbals want to get anywhere, everything else has to rendezvous with them. And if it turns out that the stations, we don't want to use their fuel for some reason, this will be the way for them to get from the Ares Pod A to the station, or from the Ares Pod A to Phobos Odemos. So, we've got two of these going over there. There's one, and then we have another one queued up. I have decided to edit some of our craft based on the information I got from the re-entry testing, and so in some cases I reduced the amount of ablator, in some cases increased the amount of ablator, and so those are the edits currently underway right now. And uh, so those missions are all not available for launch, obviously. The UDMH depot there uh, will be available in five hours, so not too long. But we do have a Mars Base 1 mission here that we can launch. Uh, I see a bit of a plot problem with this uh, Fiji 34. We've got a floaty nose cone problem. That happens when you've got two procedural parts next to each other and... Well, not this wasn't procedural, but it actually had tweak scale on it. Ignition, F1 Wigglies, launch. They wiggle a whole lot before the launch clamps release. Pretty sure the staging should go this way around. Oop, not that way. Like that. Because we want the J2s to ignite first. Okay, we are past the sound barrier. And we have J2 ignition. One minute into launch. Now, if we do happen to land at this Mars base, there is food, water, and oxygen here. And that could be used to extend the stay of the Kerbals on Mars. But that's a long shot. I haven't done enough testing. Oh, why did they go all spirally out? Not sure. Anyway, um, yeah, that's a long shot because I haven't done any testing on pinpoint landings on Mars, really. Okay, separation and ignition. Game's paused. Okay, we have it. All right. Jeez, moment of tension there. Okay, well, we've got our transfer uh, costing 3,646 
Um, right now, we I haven't uh, fine-tuned it yet, and we're basically crashing into Mars. And that's enough. Okay. Well, let's see what happened. Okay, well, we actually have an encounter. That's always nice. But it's still far away. Alright, well, RCS off. We'll have to do the fine-tuning once we get over there. It's roughly the same pass that we have with the others. Everything will be coming in pretty close to each other. 283 there, 285, 288. Marsport 1, I believe, has enough ablator. The light lander might be in trouble, though. So we'll see. Uh, it's possible for it to make orbit on its own. And maybe it can rendezvous with the station and then we can send over some fuel for it on some other uh, transfer window. But yeah, I don't know if it can capture on its own safely. This is the UDMH depot. And you can see we have 20% ablator on its heat shield. So that should be enough based on testing. Okay. Ooh, ooh, that's quite a knock. Oh, can you catch it? Can you catch it, please? Oh, wow. That's not very efficient. Okay, but, but it's alright. It's alright. First try with this rocket. I think maybe we should definitely light this engine before decoupling the boosters. We'll have to change the script to accommodate that. Okay, I'm gonna risk fairing separation here before the stage runs out. We've got more communication than we need on this little depot. And docking ports all over the place so that it's a good thing to attach to a station, basically. And shut down, despite an awkward flip in the middle there. Well, not a real flip, uh, just a severe deviation, let's say. And that severe deviation probably gave us a little bit more inclination than I intended, but uh, we'll take it and let me plot for Mars. We've gone with uh, UDMH and N204 because the crew capsule, the, the Mars pod, or Ares pod, sorry, Ares pod A, will be using these same engines, these S5.92 engines. So, yeah, and so those are the engines that we're going to try and come back from Mars to Earth with. So this is extra fuel supply just in case the trip back requires a little bit of refueling. Okay, that's shut down. We probably don't have an encounter just yet though, because 7.3 meters per second... Let's see. Nope, no encounter just yet. So, a bit of RCS necessary. It's always a fascinating fact that despite the extremely high velocities that we obviously transfer at, um, 20 meters per second is the difference between an actual encounter and, uh, not just an actual encounter, a low pass at Mars and missing it completely. Uh, so, 20 meters per second, that's 44 miles an hour. Yep. Uh, we'll have to do an adjustment as usual to make sure that our periapsis is good for capture, but we have a dummy maneuver there for now, and add that to the alarm list. Okay, here we are with another light lander. We had already sent one, but that one didn't have a blater on the heat shield, I think, so this one does have 20% ablator, and that's good. So unlike the Fiji 3R1, the 2R1 does not uh, wait until altitude to ignite the RD-270. Okay, and booster separation. Alright, that's fine. Okay, separation of that part, and then separation of the rest of the stage with ignition of the J-2. And separation of the fairings. Okay. We need 3,600 to get to orbit, which should leave us enough to make the transfer on this stage. Well, I see a problem with this. I failed on symmetry with this solar panel. This has only got a solar panel on one side, which probably means it doesn't have all that much power, at least if it curbles inside the lander can. 
If it's just the Agena avionics package, that should power down. But yeah, one solar panel is not good. On the other hand, we do have extra solar panels on this bit here, but that bit gets dumped eventually. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. And shut down. 4.1 off. Let's take a look at the situation. And that's pretty far off. <laughs> uh, I don't even see a little encounter there, so we probably overdid it quite a lot. Alright, the correction burn was 70 meters per second. We did a little bit of extra RCS. Here's our Mar Mars periapsis of 202 kilometers. And I think we're good, uh, basically in line with everything else. Okay, so here we are with the second Lunapod G. If you recall, the first Lunapod G got stranded in low Earth orbit because it didn't have enough fuel to go to Mars. And we're going to have a refueler try and meet up with that. But hopefully this time I've made enough adjustments that this will be able to make it to Mars. We'll find out. Basically, a Fiji 2R1 is half of a Saturn V, as far as mass is concerned. It's a lot simpler, though, because altogether there's only four engines on the launcher. That's compared to 11 for Saturn V. All depends on how you take the whole RD-270 thing, though. Okay, and boosters are still twitching, but there they go. All done with that, and proceeding. Not sure yet whether we have enough, of course. We did remove the recovery stuff from this one. Anything to get a little bit of extra Delta V. Okay, staging. And ignition of J2 is good. And let's see, we need 3,400 for orbit. Which leaves us with 4,000, so we should have enough this time. Okay, well, we are dropping very quickly, but our vertical speed is tending towards zero, so that's good. Our margins are a little bit tighter now, obviously, since we've been deviating from prograde so much in order to get the time to do the burn. This definitely needs one more booster if we want to avoid this, but it might still make it, so... And if it makes it, that's that's good, right? I mean, cheaper not to add another booster. Okay, we are about to make orbit here. So, all is well. Though we're hoping not too lopsided. It's trying to control that. And it's a bit lopsided. Really lopsided. Okay. Uh, alright, alright, I was gonna abort it, but uh, 460 by 160, not greatest, not the greatest, but 3,718 meters per second, just barely enough. Alright, let's plot for Mars again. Okay, we're turning to the node now. Um, it's reading less delta V than we actually have because the nozzle is turned as we turn. But, so we still have less than the 3,731 meters per second it now wants, about 13 meters per second less, and of course we'll have to do a correction and all. Any correction we do with this will probably need to be done with the RCS rather than uh, the any sort of main engines because the main engines will be blocked by the heat shield. Okay, getting ready for shutdown here. Well, it'll shut itself down, of course. Because we don't have enough fuel. That's sort of convenient. Okay, so... Separation. Yeah, there's a small reaction wheel underneath the docking port right now. Always handy for landings. It does have a little antenna because we are controlling it remotely, so let's extend that. Oh, and the one on the other side too. Okay, that's a better approach. Alright, I can deal with that. Stop all RCS stuff. Add maneuver, 276 days, so that's nice. Add that alarm. Let's try and launch our two crew now. I think we've got enough stuff on the way. We've got an Ares Pod G here, the Delight Lander, Mars Base 1 even, UDMH Depot, another Light Lander which doesn't have a proper heat shield though, Mars Port 1, 
so we certainly flung a lot of things to Mars ahead of them. So let's let's fling them now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at long last, the launch you've been waiting for, and with uh, Felipe Kerman and or Philippe Kerman and Newcast Kerman. They're both pilots. I decided uh, Newcast is new, and uh, Philippe, of course, has had a lunar mission before, and we are on uh, Saturn V equivalents, though with upgraded engines. And let's hope for the best here. What we've got is we've got a Gemini capsule. Uh, regular one. We've got uh, lunar rated heat shield, Soyuz heat shield actually, um, and then we have the big Gemini passenger compartment. As in the MOL manned orbital laboratory situation, they would have to pass through um, a trap door in the heat shield in order to get into the passenger compartment. There are no passengers. The reason for the passenger compartment is simply extra uh, living space for them. It's not a whole lot, but it's efficient. So, at least they'll have some extra space. It's pretty horrible, honestly. But they just need it to, for the 180 days, or actually probably more more than 200 days, out to Mars. After that, hopefully a station will rendezvous with them, and they can use the station space for the remainder of the time, until they have to come back, in which case, on the way back, they're going to be stuck in here again. I thought about launching another Saturn V with uh, more crew space, uh, inflatable module or something like that. That's possible. And what would happen there is uh, this plus its S4B would dock with uh, the living space, the inflatable module, with its S4B. And then one S4B would uh, complete like the first third of the transfer, or maybe a little bit more than that. And then the second S4B would finish off the transfer to Mars. It's better to do that than to launch this into a high orbit and then have the habitat rendezvous or, uh, or the opposite because um, either one of those other scenarios probably entails them spending a lot of time in the Van Allen belts. I'm explaining all this up front because uh, the engines are going to be pretty loud and I don't want to talk over them. So here we go. Let's hope for a good launch of the Fiji 551. We're a little bit over the mass of a Saturn V because these are better engines and uh, probably a little bit more massive engines, but not a whole lot more than a normal Saturn V. And off it goes. You probably noticed it on a previous Fiji 551 launch, but I also did not put the fins on the Saturn V or Fiji 551. We just skipped those. So this is actually the return vessel from Mars. It'll cap use the heat shield to capture into orbit, and then this is meant to come back. It has the food, water, and oxygen. We can take a look at the life support situation. Two years and 210 days is what I budgeted for this mission. And as far as I know, that's exactly what we need. We don't have any recyclers. We need more science to unlock those. Okay, we have center engine cutoff as planned. And ignition of the second stage. All right. We're still looking good. Okay, staging. And we have enough fuel. Just come on, game. Allow the third stage to do its thing. Oh. Okay. Ah, we loaded it into this core, and that's not good. All right. We took an extra ignition then. Yeah, I had actually moved the Stat Saturn instrument unit down a stage in order to accommodate this payload, so that we had enough uh, had enough capacity. Just for safety's sake, I mean, we obviously have 4,000 to transfer to Mars, and we don't need all 4,000, but I felt it was prudent. So I should have loaded it up in the Gemini capsule instead. Okay, and shut down. 229 by 178, and ignition. 
Trans Mars injection underway. Okay, we are a touch late on the burn, but hopefully it won't be too far off. Arriving at the node before reaching the halfway point in the burn. Okay, we are on escape now. Getting ready for shutdown. These will be our first Kerbals to really leave Earth's uh, Earth sphere. I mean, of course, technically going to the moon is leaving Earth's sphere of influence, but this feels a little bit more definite. And shutdown. Okay, 1.3 off on the shutdown, but let's see what our situation is. We do seem to have an encounter. That's good. We really need electric charge soon and that means extending the solar panels. That is just uh, fuel for the journey to Mars. And then we have a heat shield here with 20% ablator. Uh, these are the engines that uh, we will be most worried about if maybe uh, they decide to blow up on us, but that's why we have the UDMH depots heading out. Let's extend the solar panels. Again, they're not in the greatest position because uh, they'll they'll look somewhat odd when extended. Okay, so let me plot a little correction. Right now we have 2,961 meters per second, and uh, some of that is in this can here. If we quickly plot the journey back home from Mars to Earth, no insertion burn. Yeah, okay, we have two plots here. Uh, 666 days and 669 days, those are transfers back. And basically 2,100 meters per second is all we need. So that's what we need to keep. And so we've got 800 meters per second to play around with, and that's it. Now this is pretty darn heavy. Uh, this is a 5 meter heat shield. And this is way more than the 15 tons that I tested in those testing videos. So I'm going to have to go in separately and check out how this sort of thing needs to be captured. But also, we are on a very slow nine-month transfer to Mars. So that's something else to, to take into consideration. We haven't even tested a nine-month transfer. All right, let me do the correction uh, for Mars and we'll make sure that Philippe and UCAS are correctly on their way. Okay, well it looks like the correction we need is a mere 11 meters per second, so we'll do it with RCS. So just for reference though, our Fiji 551 managed to toss 48 tons to Mars on a good transfer window. This only was uh, 3,700 meters per second. It can cost more than 4,000 to get to Mars, so not at all transfer windows would this have worked. But with the upgraded F1As and the J2Ss. Okay, as I was saying, adding the alarm. 271 days for the transfer there. And so it'll get ahead of the Ares Pod G. This will actually be the first to arrive. And then Ares Pod G, Light Lander, Mars Base 1, UDMH Depot, Light Lander, uh, Mars Port 1. And we still have a few more launches that we can do. Uh, we've got another UDMH Depot, another Mars Port 1, the Hydrolox Refueler to uh, fix up the alternate Ares Pod G that is currently stranded in low Earth orbit. And then we can uh, send over this stuff for Jupiter, which uh, need to go in six days. Yep, uh, it's heady times here. Uh, the way back, by the way, the trip home is still something that takes a long time. 253 days, it says. So hopefully we can cut that down a bit. That's a long travel time. We have 942. <laughs> that's that's how tight I, I planned this. Uh, if you do the math, um, th this transfer is in uh, six, 666 days plus... It'll take 255 days to get back. That's 921. But this, this other one here... No, I, I miscalculated initially. We've got 20 days of spare food, water, and oxygen. Isn't that lovely? So, yeah. Basically, we had better get back on those transfers. But it's looking good. At least we've got this much going for us. That everything needed to get back is right here. We've got the food, water, and oxygen. We've got the fuel. 
and we don't have to rendezvous with anything else at all in order to return. Okay, there's the sun. Okay, we're recharging uh, finally. And we certainly don't have our solar panels in an ideal position to recharge. So that's good. At least we're recharging as long as the sun's there. Phew, though. That's, that's tough. And I don't know what the situation around Mars will be. After all, Mars will be blocking the sun for part of the time, too. So that's another consideration that I might not have done enough thinking about. So we've got our main missions underway, and of course the Kerbals are on their way to Mars, but we do have some backup missions including that stranded Ares Pod G that we would like to move on to Mars as well. Also for Mars is the UDMH Depot on the Fiji 3R1, and Mars Port 1, that's the backup Mars Port 1, on the Fiji 551, which is equivalent to the Saturn V. And here is the refueler for Ares Pod G that we need to match inclinations. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, Mars Port 1 backup start rolling out now. I don't think it's going to take uh, more than two days to fix up the launch pad. So yeah, let's get that starting on the rollout. And we have to time warp. So it's got to be rolling out while we're trying to launch here. But it takes so long to roll out that it's not going to make a difference. I'm going to control this manually because this is a Nico rocket and not a Fiji rocket. Fiji rockets I'll use KOS on, but Nico rockets I never cooked up the launch script for. And I'm still worried about engines going out randomly, you know, test flight. Okay, that's good enough on the relative inclination and it'll help with the rendezvous anyway. We don't want to have to do this again. So, on that note... Ignition. And launch. There's an eco rocket because of course Nico rockets are quicker to build than the Fiji rockets. Okay, we have a good ignition of two NK-43s. Well, we're in a higher orbit now, that's for sure. Shut down. Okay. Well, good enough. So we have three Astros engines on here. We have had boil off of the hydrogen. Uh, I didn't put... Oops. I didn't put uh, radiators because that would have taken longer to build. Okay, we are connected. Unfortunately, the resource tab does not seem to be reading things properly, so there's some glitchiness going on. So we're going to deorbit the refueler now. But only after double checking that this is all good. 4,339 can definitely transfer us to Mars. So, yep. Okay, that will be destroyed. And this can plot for Mars now. Incidentally, our uh, rendezvous didn't take that long. We're still rolling out the Mars Port 1 launch. So one day and four hours on that. Okay, we have our plot for Mars. I have to point out that this is still probably almost certainly doomed because this was the one without a blater. So, and I reconsidered that for the next Ares Pod G, but not this one. So... Not too sure how this is going to do on the whole capture into Mars atmosphere. It's possible, as we saw in the test, that the heat shield actually explodes, but the rest of the craft is okay because, you know, without any blazer, they're made out of paper or something. Anyway, here we go, ignition. Shut down, 2.1 off there. Let's see what we've got. Do we have a Mars encounter? And yes, yes we do. And how good is it? Uh, well, not great, but could be worse. Uh, it's obviously something that I should plot to fix, but I don't know. Okay, well, I missed recording it, but I accidentally pressed G instead of H, you know, for the RCS. And that extended the landing gear legs, and they got overstressed and exploded. Um, at this point, that's fine. I'm anticipating just using the fuel in the pod to complete 
uh, to make orbit around Mars instead of trying to aero capture with the uh, heat shield, maybe, and then using this actually as uh, something a little bit different. Maybe as another go around pod similar to the light landers. This thing does have a whopping 4,900 meters per second to work with. That's enough, of course, to use some on landing and still take off again and make Mars orbit. And it does have two parachutes, well not two parachutes, it's got four parachutes, two drogues and two mains to ensure that it lands safely. But of course, uh, Engineer would have to repack those each time. Once it gets back to orbit and we want to reuse it for another landing, for instance, if we, if we refuel, refuel it then, and we can refuel it, it can be reusable. But right now it's not even usable with no landing legs, so sort of an academic thing. Okay, hopefully the other one will be in full service though. The Ares Pod G we've already sent over. But anyway, we've got this all set up. It should be good. And let me just add the alarm. Okay, here we go with the backup Spaceport 1 on a Fiji 551. And the Saturn core is in the right place for this, so sometimes I do move the Saturn instrument unit down to the second stage, in which case we can't load a script into it, but uh, this time it's fine. So I'm just going to say run PG551, and let's hope for the best. Ignition. And launch. Okay, and second engine has ignited. A uh, second stage, I should say. Second stage has ignited, and we have five good J2s. Okay, separation of the second stage, and the third stage is. I don't know why the third stage always has that pause there, but. Okay, it's good, and we have plenty of fuel. Uh, this mission always had a lot of margin anyway, and we do have a blader on the heat shield, so that's good too. Everything looking fine. We're about to make orbit. Okay, there we go. All right, program concluded, and now we are free to plot for Mars. So uh, one more mission to send over there. And that's the backup UDMH depot. Okay, 5.4. Okay, we don't have an encounter with Mars just yet. One of these days, I mean, that's the planned encounter. That's not the real thing. One of these days, we'll do the burn, and it'll actually work out perfectly. Someday. But it has to be really 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 precise to manage that like the timing has to be perfect okay there's our necessary correction nearly 80 meters per second so it wasn't a particularly good initial burn to be honest and that's that's enough of a burn that we can use the J2 again with its last ignition instead of using RCS Okay, I completed the correction. We've now got a Mars periapsis there. I created a dummy maneuver here. We will need to get a little bit closer to Mars, but that's all right for now. And we have separated from the J2 stage. So it's just the spacecraft here. I wanted to separate so that we knew how much impulse it was going to give us. So I could correct for that as well. And it's just sort of spinning around for now. Not a care in the world, and we will add an alarm for it. Okay, so there's a Mars port one there. This one will actually arrive first. The other Mars, uh, uh, no, that's Mars base one. Where's the other Mars port? The Mars port one, the other one will actually arrive last. So, big difference. All right, so this one's all settled. Let's do the last mission to Mars that we're going to do during this window. Okay, here we are with our final launch to Mars in this window. So run PG 2R1, even though it is a 3R1. I don't have a special 3R1 launch script. Let's see how it goes. It's probably some staging mistake in here, but I'll fix that.
we should ignite the center engine before dumping the boosters, so I've got it configured like that. Might mean I have to manually drop the boosters, we'll see. Okay, and... Okay, it separated off the boosters on its own. No worries. Though we did deviate from our intended trajectory a little bit. That was certainly better than the last time we launched this, I think. Alright, separation of the first stage and ignition of the J2. Alright, we're looking good. We should make orbit with 4,000 meters per second, which is what we need. Alright, we have made orbit. We do have 4,000 meters per second, so we are ready to transfer to Mars. Let me plot that out. Okay, we were a little bit late on the burn, so we're gonna expect some sort of correction afterwards. Not that we didn't expect one anyway. Okay, we are on escape and switching to SAS. And shut down. 3.2 meters per second off. Okay, I've done part of the correction, but now I want to separate off the stage so that we can finish the correction just with the payload. And separation. No, well, that's not particularly... Oh, it's following the node. Darn it, that's not what I wanted. Okay, well, that should do the trick. That's a good periapsis for now. And it's basically on the same trajectory as our other missions. And we can add a maneuver there to do a final correction once we get there. Okay, so uh, to recap, uh, you can actually see all our missions going out to Mars. Look at all those nicely arrayed there. Those are the ones that have reached uh, solar SOI, of course. There's still a few that are inside Earth SOI lingering. Actually each one has uh, spent stage with it probably. So it's a little bit more cluttered. Than, you can sort of see the probe as well as the mission together. Gotta delete those spare stages. But anyway, they're all head out there.